<clears throat> I am. All right, Rock, let's go. Uh, another meeting to order here at uh, 802. Um, welcome to Finance Committee. Um, we can start here with uh, public comment if we like. Morning. Good morning. Good morning. And I'm glad this is being held today and not Wednesday morning when yes. we're supposed to be <laughs> under a blizzard or something. <laughs> I'm Patty Warmington from Cherry Street Health Services, and I have a coworker, Sharon Briggs, sitting over there. We are here today because one of the things that you have on your agenda is um, an action item on um, policy 9240, which is the alcohol and tobacco free policy. Um, you've already had a policy. This is an updating ad. Um, we're here in regards to more of the tobacco section of it, although we you know, are strongly in support of the alcohol part too. The, um, in the world of tobacco, um, smoke free isn't good enough anymore. It's tobacco free. There's so many new emerging products coming out from the tobacco industry that contain um, uh, d tobacco and nicotine. And if you just have a smoke free policy, you will not be able to cover all of the um, areas of you know, where kids could be bringing things in. It also expands the policy to be 24 seven on and off campus. Um, and it's more than just the um, uh, the students, it's also any vendors, anybody coming on school property. It, it just uh, explains it a lot better and enhances the policy. So I'm just here to say that, that um, we'll stay through that part of it if you do have any questions, but we urge you to support it. Okay, thank you. Yeah, sure. Thank you. Um, I think just make sure our secretary gets one. And if you, if you give those to her, she can see if anybody else would like one. Well, if the policy is approved, it'll go to the full board, so we'll have to discuss it again at that time. So we can we can have copies made to uh, have for everyone at that point. Right. Start off on our uh, action item here, uh, donations. Good morning. We just have one donation um, that we're uh, bringing you today. It is from our Student Advancement Foundation, and it is continued support for our outdoor education program at the Blanford Nature Center for our students in grades 3, 6, and 9. And the, dona the donation amount for this year, excuse me, is $55,000. Any questions about that? Nope, I'll make a quick comment. Just, you know, very grateful for the work of the Student Advancement Foundation and providing um, this enrichment program for students. Is there a motion to approve this for the full board? Motion to approve the donation from the Student Advancement Second. Foundation. All right, all those in favor? Aye. <coughs> Next on our agenda um, under reports and updates is just a brief highlight of the uh, proposed executive budget. As you know, that budget came out um, on February 7th, and it includes uh, a number of items. They, there has been um, information out of the budget indicating that it was a 2% increase to education funding, and, and while that may be true, it comes in um, various forms. Um, for us specifically, um, there is a reduction in the best practices funding from a $52 per people amount to a $16 per people amount, which equates to about $640,000 loss in revenue for our system. Um, also, what the good news is in his proposed budget is the small class size grant remains while there is will be a small reduction in that funding as well. Um, this is the first time in a number of years that he's, uh, the budget has been presented with these funds actually in it. Um, and we will continue to work with our legislators to ensure that those, that, that light item remains. Um, in addition to in his budget, he also uh, is recommending a $65 million increase to um, early childhood funding which is known in our world as the Great Start Readiness Program. 
Um, there are two parts to that. He is looking at increasing the number of slots um, as well as the amount per slot. We've received about $3,400 per slot for the last Ever. umpteen years. <laughs> I can't even recall how far back it was back. Um, but his recommendation is an increase at uh, $225, $225 per slot. So, Jeez, so that is good news. Um, a quick question. I don't know. I don't, just as you're talking about the uh, great site readiness stuff. Um, I know the president also mentioned early childhood and State of the Union. I'm sure there's nothing been proposed about that that you've heard yet, is there? He did. Um, the only thing, I've, I haven't seen anything officially. I've just been trying to keep up with any information that comes out. And what I have seen, and I'm not sure how entirely accurate it is, it's looking more in the Head Start area. Okay. Um, the, Great Start, the Great Start Readiness Program for us is um, just for four-year-olds. Um, and there's a certain criteria um, that the four-year-old has to meet to be able to participate. I know in his State of the Union address, it talked about free preschool for all. Okay. Um, so I am not sure. I know Head Start also is based on some criteria to, to be involved in that program, but I haven't seen anything official come out in writing as to what that potentially could look like. The governor's budget does also continue to include um, the performance-based funding, um, and it, it appears that it was the same criteria as um, what we were subject to for this year. And through our second budget amendment um, that uh, the board approved recently, it included about $700,000 of that performance funding for the district based on our uh, improvement in our secondary uh, assessment score. So that was good news for us. Um, and most importantly in his budget, it includes a flat foundation revenue. There is no per pupil increase. Um, there is a one-time equity payment that is included in his proposal um, that at this point in time, the way the language reads, we would not be eligible um, because of the receipt of those class size funds. They include that as part of our uh, base foundation per pupil allowance, um, even though those funds are restricted. Um, so if they continue to keep that uh, funding as a part of our base foundation allowance, we would not be eligible for that one-time equity payment um, of up to $34. It is for those districts who currently receive less than $7,000 in their per pupil funding. <clears throat> so we will continue to work with our legislators because we would like them to um, really decouple that small class size grant from our foundation allowance. Um, and if we're successful in that, attempt, then there's potential that we would be able to receive that one-time equity uh, payment. It's important to note, though, that it is a one-time. They're not building that into the foundation, um, so that would just be for the 13, 14 year only. Which schools, which schools um, are impacted by that, or what types of schools? I, I'm not quite sure that I understand. The list of districts who it's the list that are it's under districts who are under seven thousand dollars. I'd have to pull it up. There are still a number are of them there? across the okay, state yes. that are getting it's less it's than. There's a lot of rural districts too. Okay. Mm -hmm. rural, okay. Small rural districts. Okay. Yeah. But then, wouldn't most of them qualify for small class size? It, no, you know, no. It's the rural ones would not. Yeah, the mm -hmm. small class size stems back from years and years ago. Um, that there was a certain eligibility criteria, mm -hmm. and um, and then over the years they reduced it and reduced it, and then they pulled it out of the categorical, and mm -hmm. we got that put back in. But not a lot of the uh, rural districts are eligible for that. I think mm -hmm. there's about only 20 districts that are still receiving yeah, some true. form of a small class size grant at this point in time. Hmm. Hmm. Um, what is the uh, what is what is his proposed um, amount for the small class size compared to what we currently get? Isn't it still reduced from what it was? It is reduced. Um, we currently year. receive $109 per pupil, mm -hmm. and with um, the language in his proposed budget, we would be capped at $100 per pupil, so a $9 per pupil reduction, mm -hmm. which would equate for us to about two teaching positions. Mm -hmm. everywhere bench, bench, bench. Are there any other questions on the executive budget so the uh, both the Senate and the House will begin working on their versions and it's my understanding that they already are 
um, and then they'll be presenting them at some point in time, and then there'll be a conference committee between all three groups. Um, and from what I've heard, June 1st is their target to have a budget completed for schools. So we'll keep you apprised as information is, sh is shared out of Lansing. Having it sooner helps us. Mm -hmm. Have they gotten that hint yet? I mean, they've done really well at um, approving a budget in a timely fashion, so I don't want to be too picky right? Um, because there are years that it didn't get approved into the fall. But, you know, just having it before we're approving our budget would be beneficial. And I don't know if, if legislatively if that's something we should consider lobbying for or, you know, especially while the getting is good. Yeah, it, it certainly would be nice to have a final budget much sooner than June 1st. Mm -hmm. Um, to be able to make those critical decisions um, because, as you know, you have to adopt our budget um, prior to June 30th. Right. And right. if their budget isn't completely done by June 1, it doesn't leave us a lot of time if there happen to be drastic changes in what comes out of the conference committee and approved as a budget. So having it a little bit sooner would be nice. Um, there is recognition by some legislators that getting it done sooner is better for the school districts. Um, how widespread that is, I'm not sure. Okay. And we will be, I've been working with Mr. Hemholt to talk about, uh, once the uh, each chamber puts out their budget, we'll be spending another day in Lansing like we did last year. Mm -hmm. yeah. All right, next on our agenda is actually the January financial statement, so I apologize. The um, agenda that was included in your packet uh, referenced the December financial statements, even though the data was actually for January, so I, I apologize for that. Um, error on my part, but we're about 45% of the way through the school year um, and 58% of the way through the fiscal year. Um, not a lot of um, surprises or uh, data that would uh, cause alarm from our end. Um, on the revenue side, um, our restricted state sources for our, our revenue under our grants is about 72% of the budget. And that's mainly due to carryover. We're anticipating um, spending about $4 million of Section 31A carryover, and we recognize that money already because we actually received it last year. So that's why there's a, a slight variance. Um, and our federal restricted uh, sources, we continue to um, request reimbursement as those funds are expended. Um, we cannot do an advance request and have those funds ahead of time. So as, as those funds are being expended, we are requesting them. Questions? Any questions on the financial statement? I, oh, one thing you had said that you had referenced them as December numbers. I don't see, I, I see that it says January everywhere, and so I guess it I does. Wanna... It was just on oh. the agenda page itself. Oh, well, okay. It said December on there. Originally. Okay, yeah. And then it was yeah. And then I think okay. um, yeah, Marlene was able to update it. Just making it sure morning. I was, you know, reading these properly. Prior to <laughs> <laughs> All right. Next on our agenda um, is our purchasing agenda. And we have just a couple of items on there. And then I have Mr. Clem Parents who can answer any questions you, you have about the purchase and installation of the elevator for stocking school. I believe he included a memo in your packet as well. Uh, yeah. well, th this is the first item that we're spending money on for stocking. It's got a long lead time, so we need to get this uh, purchased and approved. Actually, the number that came in was well under our budget for the elevator and installation. Um, we still have, in our budget, we had the elevator and the installation, and then separately the housing, the all the construction work to hold the elevator. But this was good news that it came in under what we expected. Um, That's real, real good news. Are they putting that, is it going to go in the existing building, or are they putting uh, building something on no, the outside we, of the building? To um, we're taking um, a former prep room. And in, in, in our conversions, we're converting that to the elevator room, or the elevator shaft and the mechanical room that goes with it. And it works for both floors. There's a space on the second floor also. 
It's meant to be, as they say in Grand Rapids. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, warm, safe, dry update. Anything else to? Uh, warm, safe, and dry. Just to give you a status where we are, uh, on the summary sheet that you have, uh, the first projects are essentially complete. East Leonard is the work there was complete. The second phase is the parking lot, which we're going to put off till the summer of 14. Uh, Ottawa Auditorium roof is complete. The Fountain Elementary fire alarm is complete. Congress, the fire alarm roof and sidewalk are complete, although there is more sidewalk work we'll get to eventually. Uh, Brookside roof is complete. Uh, so unless there's objection next month, those will come off this list as not being current mm -hmm. uh, Frost is done except for punch list items to complete uh, the Creston Energy management system controls is something we're going to start this summer But it will take about a year and a half to complete so it will be ongoing our plan is to do all the heat control valve work this summer then we can do the um, thermostat work ongoing while students are in the building the valve work we need to get to when there's no one around um, stocking uh, we have a tight budget for all we want to do in stocking and just a reminder we're looking at a new kitchen cafeteria refurbishing the gymnasium and a new kitchen the elevator new restrooms and then refurbishing the classrooms to make them acceptable and open up so we're looking at shifting some of our projects that are a little lesser priority to make sure we have money to do this. We're in the process of that, and we'll give you exact numbers of what we're looking at next month. But it's still within the warm, safe, and dry funding. Um, the other projects under multiple, and the reason they're multiples, we've, we've grouped them under one architect and CM. Uh, the Sherwood walls uh, will move ahead without problem. Uh, the Ford is restrooms on the ground floor for the early ed for pre-k kindergarten first uh, Central refurbishing we are still establishing exactly what we're going to do in that building to fit all the centers of innovation in we met on Friday with the high school principals and the Center of Innovation directors and got some more direction and we were on good track to, to do that work uh, but we have to finalize specifically what we're going to do especially in the old gyms is how we convert those for academy design and construction and the robotics program mm -hmm. uh, then the, the main building will be more of a general refurbishing where we can and what we can do with the monies we have uh, creston the flooring is just replacing flooring that's not in good shape there's a number of rooms that the carpet is is worn or coming up uh, our plan is to uh, primarily re remove carpet in the bedrooms and refinish the hardwood floors if that's not acceptable in us because of a condition of a flooring subfloor we'll um, put carpet back in and then there are some hallways that we'd like to return to terrazzo if we can otherwise we'll recarpet them we have gone through an inventory so we know what we what rooms we're looking at doing not the entire building uh, th that's where we stand just an update generally speaking of the roughly four million dollars we receive for the 12 13 year we've spent or committed to date about a half million we have roughly three and a half million remaining most of which is getting addressed uh, on the transformation plan work I have a question. Um, I, I see where um, the Vendors are listed like on the pages behind the sheet that you just went through. How is the um, local, um, not local first, but whatever the policy was. Is policy. it local first? L local purchasing. Local, local purchasing policy. How is that factoring in with um, the vendors that we have? And I know because it was new, we were going to monitor to make sure that it was accomplishing kind of the goals that we were looking to accomplish. How is that working out? So far, it, it either all the vendors are meet the local preference or none of them do. Okay. We haven't had a case where it's made a difference in a bid. Okay. But we do um, address it on each bid and monitor to see if it applies or not. Okay. Did we did we publish an RFP of some sort to get different vendors on kind of a list? 
so that they would know that this was new for us and to kind of, you know, have people already in our system that would make it, you know, I don't know, easier for them to be aware of what's happening in the district. Do we do any of that? Uh, I'll let Fred answer that specifically, but when we put out a bid, it is noted very clearly in the request for quotation document that okay. this applies and what, what, uh, how it, how it is applied and addressed and places to call with questions. Okay. We have not put out any general information to all the buyers or vendors right now as far as um, that information, but we can do that. We can um, either put it out basically to our, our local or we our local list of cards we have in there that are Right. If you like that done, we can do this certainly. Well, I, I guess the reason I was asking is because I'm thinking, you know, if we put together a new policy um, with the intent of recruiting additional people and we're only communicating to those we've already been working with, then we've missed the mark in terms of being able to recruit more people into b becoming vendors for the district. And so I don't, you know, I'm, I don't know, I'm no um, procurement expert or anything, so I don't know if there's a way of kind of blanketing the community to let them know that we have this, you know, new pol relatively new policy in, in order to get into our system so that they can then become aware of what's happening when we send out those RFPs and things like that, then, you know, that may be something that's... Well, uh, I'll, I'll check with John Humboldt. Maybe we can work on something like that from a, the communication standpoint. Yeah. To include that in a newsletter or some type of thing that that has communication goes out. Yeah. And we had, we had discussed it at, at the time of... Uh, mm -hmm. The development of that policy, and actually, that we have, I believe, the staff person is no longer with GPS, but we had discussed that, like a vendor fair type of yeah. um, activity, but kind of got lost in the shuffle of things. I think yeah, over sure. the uh, last year and a half. Yeah. So. And and then when we do a general advertisement, mm -hmm. it's listed in there also. So that would be real where it's really open to mm -hmm. um, any newcomer. And where do general advertisements they're, they're go? Post, they're posted. There's a, a state website that we work through. Okay. And they're posted on there. Okay. Great. Budget calendar. Budget calendar, just to give you uh, a brief update. So for the month of February, the governor, as we just discussed earlier, released his executive budget. Um, we briefly discussed earlier this month um, the impact to the district, which I briefly shared this morning as well. Um, the board did approve, um, I believe at the February 4th meeting, the resolution for 90-day exempt layoff notice. And we also had scheduled for the month of February to begin negotiations with the other employee groups. Um, we have six employee groups or five other employee groups, rather, whose uh, contract is set to expire in June of 2013. So we have uh, received a request from several of those groups to actually begin the negotiations process. So we're just beginning um, to work through identified teams and, and to get something on calendars for that. Coming up for uh, the month of March, we're going to continue our lobbying efforts. Um, the proposed executive budget, as well as um, for what come, may come out of both the House and the Senate. And then we will begin to look at, um, work with the superintendent the administration will begin to come up with initial options for any type of budget reductions um, to be able to balance our budget for the 13-14 fiscal year. Any other questions about the finance section of the agenda? Mm -mm. All right. We're on to uh, policy section. Uh, action item is the uh, policy directive here, uh, 9240. Is there a motion to uh, start talking about this? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Is that a new policy or a, a new um, uh, manner in which? Is there a motion to approve this? So we can start talking. About yes, okay. motion to approve uh, policy 9240. Support. All right. Discussion. Um, I, I don't know these people from Cherry Street Health Services. I'm Dr. Randalls. I'm a pediatrician there. But um, so this 
complete disclosure, we did not collude on this <laughs> policy. Um, I, I think that uh, it makes a lot of sense uh, to have uh, clarity and to also make sure um, in regard to sporting events, um, baseball is well known to be a sport where people chew. Um, and because they are becoming easier to, to utilize, um, it, it makes sense, you know, football, other sports may uh, do it as well. So I think uh, making sure we have a blanket statement in regard to what our athletes will be doing makes a lot of sense. Um, and so many buildings, um, hospitals, I would imagine, um, uh, most offices are smoke free and with a radius around their properties as well. So a lot of this isn't, um, I think, terribly prob problematic. Uh, <clears throat> to what extent can we really impact uh, drivers and contractors. I, I know we could uh, definitely impact a contractor, but, and I would imagine UPS does not allow their people to be smoking while they're delivering packages. So, I don't, uh, putting in the delivery drivers, um, all groups using property, that makes sense, but the delivery drivers, I think, uh, sometimes it, it seems a little overreaching. Yeah, I guess, to speak personally to this, I mean, I, I smoked for 12 years of my life, you know, I can completely understand telling our students not to smoke, not to use tobacco on campus. Um, you know, the, there's a few statements in here. This does not include products that are classified as nicotine replacement therapy and are prescribed by a physician. Well, I mean, that's, you don't necessarily need a prescription to get a nicotine patch or a nicotine gum. Mm -hmm. And uh, I would hate to have some rule in place that would prevent someone who is seeking, um, you know, a means to to quit smoking, to prevent them from saying you have to have a prescription to be able to use those products, I think is a little overreaching. Um, and as it comes to the the other, you know, emerging tobacco products, the non smokeless tobacco products, um, certainly don't want. I mean, you know, the age of eighteen, consenting adult, you're not a GRPS student anymore. Um, I just don't feel like we need to be the nanny state telling um, consenting adults what they can do. But there is no secondary effect. Um, if if someone who is delivering uh, <coughs> you know, a package to GRPS and is a delivery driver, they happen to have a, a a nicotine pouch or whatever in their mouth, and no one is none is the wiser. I don't see how that you, know, you should be able to tell them if if they're using that as a coping method for not smoking. If they're if they're using that as a uh, um, a replacement therapy, wh whatever that may be, um, I just don't think that they should. Uh, we should be able to tell them what to what to do on that. That's not really my uh, my prerogative. I actually had questions about some of the language and why it was in there. So you know, before I have an opinion about it, I'm curious to know what was the rationale for some of what's in here. That is a great question, um, and this actually is. Mr. Helmholt. <laughs> Perfect, Perfect timing. timing. <laughs> right into the fire here. And there is a typo, right? Spit tobacco, one, two, three, third paragraph, snuff, I think it's supposed to be. No, that's a, no, it's a new. Oh, a new thing. List. Oh, S N U S. Oh. And it's not uh, capitalized. Where are you? Which, which paragraph? Third paragraph. Um, it's spit. It's developed, it's developed in like Sweden like years ago. Oh. oh, I see. Like a little pouch. This language was template language that was provided to us um, by the coalition. So this is something that the language they're using and pushing and advocating for throughout the state. Mm -hmm. um, we reviewed it, basically took and incorporated this with our existing policy. So what did they say? I mean, did they what's say the why? Question, what's the... You know, just, you know... Like John was mentioning, it seems put like the hammer well, down. Yeah. So. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like to join us back here again. Yeah. <laughs> so you ladies are the coalition. <laughs> John referenced. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're just, well, we're Members here. of um, the, Cherry Street has a um, grant from the Michigan Department of Community Health Tobacco section. So they are the ones who are um, pushing for all schools to um, up 
upgrade basically their tobacco policies if they don't meet certain requirements. They've rated all of the policies in the um, public schools across the state from one through four, with four being the highest. Currently, Grand Rapids Public Schools is rated a two. <clears throat> I don't think there were any rated a one, were there? I don't think so. Um, and they're looking for schools to be at least at a three or four. The policy that you have in front of you is a four. That's an enhanced policy. That is like the gold star. That is what the state is, is desiring. <clears throat> so I don't know if you have any specific questions. Well, I'm not a I'm smoker right here. and I've never mm -hmm. been a smoker, but I will say as a um, person who is a non-smoker, um, walking into an environment that is smoke free and being exposed to smoke is offensive. Mm -hmm. And so I don't, you know, I don't know if that, if that's the rationale and I don't know if that's just people aren't monitoring the boundaries that exist, you know, to be so many feet away from a building or whatever. I don't know if that even corrects that, but is that well, part that, of your rationale? Um, well, the, there's, it's basically on public health we're looking at, um, you know, making it healthy for all people um, and, and putting a standard. And, and, and I do agree, it's, it's stepping it up when you're, when you're looking at um, everybody who comes onto school-based property. Uh, you know, are, is somebody going to be running out and, you know, doing something to a delivery person? Um, you know, I don't know how, how that's best to handle it. This is, this is fairly new. But I think it's, it gives a big statement, and it also, you know, supports any individual vendors or service people coming on board, um, you know, about them not smoking, why they are in the in the presence of basically children, because that's what school is about, is about kids. So they can still smell like smoke if they were smoking. You know, that's not what we're trying to police here. No, if we they can't. We, in we, and we, you can we smell can't control yeah, that, and we aren't, we aren't looking at people are going to be search to, to yeah. you know, okay. well, I, have, I have no argument about smoking whatsoever <clears throat> we can completely ban smoking from the building because mm -hmm. smoking has a, that ne a, se a secondary negative okay. connotation okay. that for, yeah. for other Effect. people around yeah, you. yeah. whereas mm -hmm. some of these other things I mean, are I have gum in my mouth currently mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I mean if I had a, a non tobacco product that I didn't have to spit in my mouth you guys would never know mm -hmm. it has no negative impact on your mm -hmm. person and I am above the age of 18 and not a GRPS student I don't see how we should be able to tell a consenting adult that that's something they can or can't. It's a choice that they can mm -hmm. make, individual an individual mm -hmm. choice that they can make, and you know it's their decision if they want to, you know, whatever the negative health effects associated with that. That is their decision. It's not my mm -hmm. my position to tell them what to do. Uh, Mr. Carter, I just want to point out as part of a big package for contractors coming on site, mm -hmm. it is right in that package that we are a smoke-free campus. Mm -hmm. If the if their employees do want to smoke, they have to go off. Our right. Road. Actually, I don't. I have no issue with the smoking. Like we can ban smoking That's altogether, right. and you know, as a, as a person who's who smoked for a good portion of his adult life, mm -hmm. um, I, I mean, the whole banning yeah. smoking in bars. Mm -hmm. Like I completely agree with you. It's yeah. very, you know, it's very nice to be able to go into places, not have to walk yeah. through that, not have that. or leave without smelling like right. at the bowling alley. You see that way. Right. Sport exactly. Moment. I have, I have mm -hmm. no issues with the, the smoking. I'm more concerned with the other. You know, yeah. And it, it doesn't. It, not even delivery drivers, or I mean. You know, if there's a, somebody that's working second shift that wants to have a chew in their mouth while they're doing something, uh, it, you know, there's no one in the building. It's not, uh, it, has no, it has no effect on our, I don't think, on our student population or anyone in particular. Well, Go ahead. that chew also spit, so where are they going to spit? Well, I have no, I, I could even deal with the chew, but the, I mean, there's other things in here. Um, well, and, the, and those are the new products that are coming out. A lot of them are not easily available in Michigan yet, but they, they are coming out. They are being marketed. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> there, uh, there is the electronic cigarette that's um, readily available. Mm -hmm. um, so there are those new things that are coming out, um, and this is just to kind of stay ahead of the game. And has the I mean, and I and I don't know any of the you know is, are the health consequences of those? I mean, is there is there studies to say that those are? They're fairly they're fairly new, and the smoking industry will say that with some of the things it's placement or it's to help cut down <clears throat> what they're finding in just the initial studies that they're doing is uh, let's just say and this is not based on schools it's just based in general workplace that they work that they work in a, um, a smoke-free environment so they cannot smoke and 
so during the eight hours or so that they work, they cannot smoke unless they, you know, are leaving to an area where they can um, on a break. But and and so they go through eight hours of their day without smoking. They go home. They get in their vehicles. Whatever they they light up. They do what they want to do. But now with some of the new products coming out, they are now taking in those products. They are you know what um, some of the things look like. Um, um, breath mints, some of them um, in, in various those little strips that you have, some of them look like a toothpick with that's been dipped in chocolate, which is actually dipped in a tobacco product that, you know, so all you see is kind of a toothpick sticking out of someone's mouth. Now someone in the workplace then could be using these products. The health damage to them is now instead of those eight hours of being tobacco free, now they are eight hours of actually higher use than what they would be with a with the tobacco. Is that tobacco or nicotine product? Um, they're, they're both. I mean, there's some form of nicotine on them. Um, mm -hmm. they, are, they are not smoking types of products. However, they're all... Because that's a smoking. big distinction in terms of you've got uh, the gums, which um, there isn't enough time to sort of necessarily say that that could still lead to oral cancers. Um, but the, the big problem in regard to tobacco products has always been the tobacco um, and that as a delivery item for nicotine. So if they're only continuing their nicotine addiction, you know, for the days, that they're, for the hours that they're awake, uh, we certainly can't. But if, if like this toothpick then has a little bit of tobacco the on it, that is... is very finely crushed up tobacco by my okay. understanding. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So then Very that can fine, be so that, you know, gum is different, strips may be um, tobacco as well. I, I'm not a big, yes, um, can I, we call from the office? I think the whole point is the examples <laughs> that the adults are setting for parents is the initiation of children using tobacco is starting at 11 or 12. And tobacco industry is really uh, looking to replace 400,000 people who die every year You know, if we as adults kind of uh, role model for the youth, regardless of whether it's smoking a cigarette or using the emerging products that are coming out, that's the important piece. So when you're talking about um, delivery people and that sort of thing, as Leanne said, you know, you have, we already have that in this policy for 25 people who still have kidney cancer. What is the policy exactly? Property line. It's a, that's a state policy. You can't smoke within 25 feet of an entrance of a building, and then we just ban it on all GRPS property. You can't use it anywhere on. Uh, you have to go to the public sidewalk, to the closest place you can smoke. On a Do we have anything about chew or no, no so other that's, tobacco that's product? It just says no person at any. I didn't know if there was. No, but he was talking about the. Contract existing. Yes, how they work with contractors. So I was just clarifying if there was another hidden policy that I didn't know about. Well, I think having this information is extremely helpful to um, kind of read through to get a better understanding of the language in the policy before it goes. You know. Yeah, I would certainly entertain the. I mean, now that we have we have this. We should we get can. those uh, packets for every. Board. Yeah, yeah, she, yeah, she, yeah, she, she has. Yeah, yeah. Board. yeah. Um, well, she has to. So we'll save okay. us printing. Um, yeah. Could I make a couple other statements? I think uh, officially from the Academy of Pediatrics that uh, average age of uh, starting cigarettes is 13. So it is a, it is a true issue. It's a real issue um, in regard to having these things uh, and exposures. Um, the um, nicotine is highly addictive, and um, so we have to be careful about that. Um, I think that we could fine tune our policy. Of course, this is my opinion, but um, in terms of if if people don't want to completely adapt to this, which um, it seems a little overbearing, but um, I'm fine from a pediatrician standpoint being overbearing in regard to this. <laughs> um, but the oral fetish items, I think, uh, are problematic. You know, a, um, a cigarette um, that isn't. It's smokeless, but it's still a problem. Mm -hmm. It's still sort of out there in the culture. Um, it, okay, people, somebody's toothpick, 
not that many people walk around with a toothpick in their mouth. So, you know, I think that having people dispose of it, if it starts becoming more of a trend, um, so that we're not sending a signal, um, that's sort of d definitely where we need to be considering. And if we fine tune something about this, that would be, we would have to be really cognizant of from the, from the district standpoint, before um, the March 4th meeting, it would be good to know if, you know, if there is any level of abuse that we're already seeing. You know, I don't know, that's probably a quick principal question, but, you know, so that we can have an idea of what's already in the schools or what they're already, you know, taking away or disciplining students for or not because the policy doesn't speak to it. If we could know some of that, that would be helpful, I think, by that time. Mm -hmm. You know, I think the main purpose of this, it, our current policy basically covers all of these. It basically says, or other items. Mm -hmm. And this is intended to do exactly what they had mentioned, about raise public awareness about the issues around tobacco and nicotine products and spell it out in greater level of detail to bring it up to speed to the 21st century, to the products of 2013. I mean, this really doesn't do much more than add more specificity and detail to what a policy that was already generally all-encompassing. You know, it, it, I think we can certainly talk and find out what, what the s principals and teachers are facing um, but again, this goes back to um, really making a statement um, when it comes to the children and what the expectation is on our property and in our schools with regards to tobacco and nicotine products. Nothing more, nothing less. Yeah, you know, and as you mentioned that, John, I'm also, so then I'm concerned that an innovative um, industry like the tobacco industry could come up with something that isn't in this policy in three months and then we're spending more time on a policy to continue to update it because it's so specific. And so I, you know, I don't know. I think, well, I think any new emerging well. project, uh, products, any new, uh, <coughs> excuse me, emerging tobacco products um, sort of covers that in that second paragraph. Okay. <coughs> Wouldn't you think? Um, you know, I don't know. I think if, if, if you specify a whole list, Right. And then you don't. I think there it leaves room to argue that that wasn't included. That's just my. Oh, I think <laughs> examples know? of though uh, yeah. then gives you still broader reach too, that the lawyers I think scrutinize this well. Examples of mm -hmm. and then none are, um, and any new emerging product sort of covers everything where. Mm -hmm. I guess would it negatively impact any contractor or delivery person that we have currently? I mean, I, I can't envision that somebody's walking around with a SIG delivering packages. <laughs> You're so hip. <laughs> Squares. Right. But they're <laughs> so. And, and I guess the other piece too is if people are too uncomfortable but like you mentioned john if it's already taken care of maybe there's a, there there are other ways to kind of meet the need of raising awareness such as a resolution or something of that nature that still you know brings us to kind of the public to say <clears throat> this is our position but maybe keeping the policy still general if if that you know helps people why are we a two <clears throat> with our policy. You don't have these specific things listed. You're, you're just meeting the standard of the um, smoke-free schools. That's mm -hmm. what a two is. Mm -hmm. oh, a one is if we could, and so that's why there weren't any ones really on the list is all of the schools are meeting the, the minimal standard of what's been put out there before. Mm -hmm. But that was before all of the change in the products came up. Mm -hmm. And, and, and it's generally it's not only, you know, targeting trying to get schools right now but it's it's all workplaces it's all you know a lot of smoke free policies they really need to be changed to tobacco free mm -hmm. to keep up with the, the, mm -hmm. the new products that are out there for the intent of really what they're trying, trying to, do, to do which is health and safety that's a good point yeah no i agree so um Motion, I approve, I move to yeah, we approve this. Yes, we just need a vote. Yeah. Oh, is, is, yes. There's a motion here? I, I approve. Uh -huh. And I supported it, and we were in discussion. Yes. Let's call the roll. Uh, oh, sure. Randles? Or not? Yes, sir. Yes. 
Sunita? Yes. Ms. Nalanier, do you approve this policy? Yes. I'm, 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 I'm to go to no. the full board? Yes, to go to the full board. Yes. yes. I'm no. Connor, no. Randall's, yes. Right. Motion carries, two to, two to one. Thank you. <laughs> Sustainability policies. Um, oh, you know, I, I, um, were you here last time when we talked about sustainability? Mm -hmm. All right. Um, oh, I did talk to uh, President Falb and uh, Superintendent Neal about setting up a oh, okay. task force or a, a small ad hoc policy committee to further discuss sustainability. And uh, so I think we will uh, hopefully go ahead with that. Um, mm -hmm. I know you've expressed interest and uh, Mr. Legrand has expressed interest. Mm -hmm. um, not interested. Not interested. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, well, I'm gonna, so I'm saying That's we, we, we got to have three, so we'll put it out to the rest That's of the board great. to see who yeah. else, uh, mm -hmm. if there's anyone else on the board that may be interested in mm -hmm. um, serving, and uh, we can uh, get that. I know that Dr. Randall's has done a bunch of uh, research. research and reaching mm -hmm. out to, to mm -hmm. get some good stuff going on this. So um, that's all right with you guys. We'll get that get that going here in the next uh, next month or so. And if you need. Re Background information, if you want to share, or you need information ahead of time, just let us know. We're better than you with this, Ken. <laughs> <laughs> well, and of That's course, we've realized <laughs> this Just is Ken, right? right. Just, I think I heard Ken. Ken. Yeah. 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 Yes, yeah. You, you There's no Thanks. financial impact uh, <laughs> right this minute for any. Uh, <laughs> but yes, no, I think the whole uh, cons the concept was to have some people from admin, but yeah. to not burden people with right. the transformation plan going on right now right. that this is going to be some major well I, I really think it could be too again I'd like for you version. guys to get to mm -hmm. get together first and kind of fig figure right. out what direction you want to right. where That's, you guys want to yes. go and then yeah. we can bring staff in and yeah yeah go from there. just so Ken's not thinking oh my gosh I'm uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'm already overburdened oh I am <laughs> That's exactly what I'm thinking. right yeah so I wanted to clarify that that, that there's not that's, that's system wide at this point, though, isn't it? Oh, feeling over, over feeling over, 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 over. Yes, <laughs> yes, 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 yeah. Well, we appreciate all that. Mm -hmm. Is there anything else? Any legislative items to be discussed? I do not have any legislative items, but just wanted to uh, make mention of a couple of things um, in whether it probably won't come to the March Finance Committee, um, but more than likely will come to the April Committee. Is we are currently working on a couple of RFPs. Um, one for our banking services and another for our audit services. <laughs> it's time um, to get that back out and see what else is out there and, and how can we. You said banking and what was the other? Um, audit. 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 Yeah. Oh, okay. Uh, is banking going to include um, direct deposit? We already, we already do direct deposit oh, for okay. the employees. Oh, okay. Um, yeah, okay. and actually we have a, yeah, I don't, well, I don't know what the rate is off the top of my head, but we do have a, a fairly high rate of direct oh, okay. deposit within okay. our district. Um, but okay. yes, it will continue I know to somebody include that. I had asked me about that, so I was wondering. And then our little board check, I, I never did that thing on that, that time. That, yeah. That's what I thought you were talking about. That's what I was <laughs> No, no, no. Uh, all right. Anything else? Mm -mm. I'll do it. We're Thank, you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Very good. That's what you need.